The following lesson is linked to learning outcome two, reading and viewing, and addresses the assessment standard that requires learners to explore and explain key features of texts and how they contribute to meaning. Learners should be able to identify and explain the purpose, structure, and language use in texts across the curriculum, recognize the writer's and or the character's viewpoint, and give supporting evidence from the text. Hello, it's great to have you back for the next lesson in this English series. My name is Becky, and as you probably know, these lessons are all about becoming active, critical readers. In this series, we are taking our examples from the newspaper, and so far we've looked at a variety of different texts, including news stories, reviews, and opinion pieces. Besides the fact that newspapers hold so much information and so many different ideas and opinions, can you think of any other reason why newspapers are so interesting? Well, I think it's because there are so many different people involved in putting a newspaper together. Many people don't realize how many people it takes to make a newspaper. Take a look at this graphic. Here we can see how information is collected from the outside world by lots of different people. It's collected in one central document, in this case, the newspaper before it's sent out again to be consumed by the readers. Having a lot of people collecting information for the paper helps to ensure that a wide range of views and opinions are expressed. But the exchange of information does not stop there. There is another step in this process. Can you see in this diagram that the readers get to talk back to the newspaper as well? This is very important to remember. A newspaper is most successful when there is a two-way exchange of ideas and information between the newspaper and the readers. By now, you are probably wondering, how on earth a reader speaks back to the newspaper? Well, this is what I mean. Every newspaper has a letters section where readers can write in with their comments and opinions about what is in the papers. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to list characteristics of an effective letter to a newspaper, identify the opinion expressed in a letter, and comment on the writer's style. We asked the editors at the Sunday Times what would happen if we wrote a letter to their newspaper. This is what Jessica Bezedenhout, the Johannesburg news editor at the Sunday Times, had to say. I mean, you must remember that we have all kinds of people out there. We have nutcases. We have people that are completely passionate about issues that won't ever affect 99% of the population. Um, in cases where that passion um, is of significance, where we feel that um, you know they 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 form part of a, a core readership, etc., we would we would take note. We can't publish every single letter that comes in at the Sunday Times. What we do is we filter through those letters and, and seek out the ones that are relevant. So Jessica Bezedenhout says that if you want to have your letter published in the newspaper, it needs to be relevant, current and significant to most readers of the paper. Let's find out from Fred Kumalo the editor of the opinion pages at the Sunday Times, how many letters the Sunday Times receives in an average week? After all, Fred Kumalo is a person who's in charge of selecting which letters get published. You may remember that we met him earlier on in the lesson about opinions and editorials. Yeah, the Sunday Times, as you know, is a, a mass circulation newspaper. Uh, um, so as a result, we interact with uh, millions of, of South Africans and they interact with us. They, they phone us if there's something happening and they write us emails, they write us um, letters through the old system, the snail mail. Um, in any given week, 
I think uh, I would get sometimes 95 letters from which I have to select uh, seven of the best, which, as you can imagine, is a mammoth task. So I start reading uh, the submissions uh, on, on Tuesday morning. OK, so they get lots of letters. How does he choose which ones get published? I, I employ quite a few criteria uh, in selecting those letters. Are they relevant and topical? Are they relating to issues that are being spoken about on our trains, taxis, taxi rank, and so on? Um, and of course, brevity is, is, is very supreme. Uh, you can imagine we've got limited space, and we have to select seven of the best letters. So um, the briefer your letter, the more relevant it is, the more chances it, it stands in being uh, published. So, letters need to be short, relevant, and topical. But what happens when they're very controversial? In a democracy like South Africa, we have the right to say whatever we want about a subject without being afraid of getting into trouble. But what happens when a person's freedom of expression is hurtful and insulting to another? We ask Fred what he does when he gets a letter that is racist or sexist. Yeah, uh, I did indicate that we, we've got our ethics as, uh, as a newspaper. Um, a letter, for example, advocating racism, sexism, and uh, that is full of insults, wouldn't stand a chance of being uh, published uh, because we, we want to uphold the highest possible uh, standards in terms of journalistic uh, uh, ethics and just general um, uh, respect of other people's human rights. I mean, we have a constitution in this country. It is the supreme law of the land. And uh, whatever we publish shouldn't contradict the constitution and other people's uh, rights. We asked a group of learners what they would do if they were the editor of the letter section of a newspaper and they got a letter that was sexist or racist. Um, if, I, if I got a letter and I was asked to print it, I would look at it first and see if it was, was sexist or racist. If it was sexist and racist, I would just put it aside and forget about it. If it was, wasn't, I would print it and, yeah. <laughs> okay, if I was an editor of a newspaper company and I received a letter that was sexist or racist, I think that I would actually quite scrap it because I feel that this is a democratic country now and that we should put our issues besides us and try and look forward and leave the past behind. So whatever letter is out there to discriminate people, I don't think that it should be published. Um, because we shouldn't be lingering on the things of the past, whether it's being racial or sexual. This is now a new country and we live all for one and, all, and one for all. If I, had, if I was an editor of a newspaper and I had to receive a letter that was sexist or racist, I wouldn't edit it and I would phone the person and ask them, do they really expect me to edit a letter like that? Because South Africa is a country where we've moved past that and pushed it behind us and we're trying to work towards 2010 when there will be a better year for all of us and a better share for everybody in this country. I don't think that sexist or racist issues matter anymore and that everybody is equal in South Africa. Well, let's see if Fred Kamala agrees with these. Yeah, it's, it's uh, quite a debatable thing because a person would, uh, could accuse us uh, of uh, interfering with his freedom of expression if he were to write a letter uh, calling uh, gay people names. Uh, but at the same time, those gay people have got um, their own rights um, as, as, as uh, enshrined in the Constitution. So it's, it, it's quite debatable because we might decide not to publish um, what that person has to say about gay people, especially if he or she in, is insulting them. But at the, at the same time, he needs to be heard uh, as, a, as a person using the, the freedom of right uh, thing. So um, we, but we do reserve our right to not to encourage um, uh, sexism, racism, and so on. I think this is a very complicated issue that doesn't have a clear right or wrong answer. What do you think? You may want to debate the following question in class. 
Do you think newspapers should publish letters that are racist or sexist? Let's review the different points that we covered today. Letters to the editor should be relevant to what is happening in the world and in news at the time. They should make their point as briefly and effectively as possible. They should substantiate a point of view with evidence. They should not contain offensive statements, insults or hate speech. Let's take a look at the letter that was published in the Sunday Times and see how the writer has met these criteria. I've been following the adult show for the past few months and have thoroughly enjoyed it. I must, however, express my absolute disgust with Maralo's attitude towards V on last Sunday night's show. V is an excellent singer and has all the qualities of a pop idol and deserves to be in the semi-finals. She did not deserve Maralo's negativity, but I am sure she will lift herself above this. Although judges have given negative comments on this show, none have stooped this low. The letter was written during the week that the semi-final selections were being made for the Idol singing competition and there were many people watching to see who would go through to the finals. That makes this letter relevant and topical. Now we need to ask ourselves if the writer makes his point quickly and effectively. I've been following the Idol show. Express my absolute disgust. She did not deserve Mara's negativity. We see that the letter writer expresses his opinion clearly and strongly. One thing the writer could have done is explain a bit more clearly why he felt the judge was unfair. But we see that even though the writer obviously feels very strongly and passionately about the subject, he isn't rude or offensive in his letter. It is worth remembering that these hints about letter writing apply to any situation where you write a letter expressing your point of view not just writing to a newspaper. Before we go on to the task for today, let's take a quick look at our diagram charting objectivity and subjectivity of a piece of writing. Where would you place the letters along this line? The letters are definitely subjective writing and because they are not restricted by the editor, they can be as subjective as the writer likes. Here is your task for today. Find three examples of letters that have been written to the newspaper and then answer the following for each letter. What is the writer's opinion? What is the writer's intention? For example, is the writer criticizing or praising? Is the writer suggesting a solution or pointing out a problem? Well, that's all from me for today. See you for our next lesson where we will change our direction a little bit and learn about reading pictures. From me, Becky, it's goodbye till next time.